Katsuru 2000, sorry, Kat, Keisuto, Keisuto 3000. Welcome to the stream, man. I appreciate having you here. So, is there anyone in the stream who has no idea what this game is about? You can see we have about, I don't know, seven, eight people or so in the stream. And some viewers that are not counted. Seven, nine, nine people in the stream. So if you have no knowledge about the game, I'd love to explain it to you. I'm just gonna go here, I'm just gonna run through it, because I have a feeling that we have some viewers that are uh, not in the stream and might be watching from eSport Carnage website. So I'm just gonna run over it quickly. This is the entrance window. From here you can choose your heroes. I can choose a mage. I can choose my archer, or I can choose my knight. These are the three classes you have access to at the moment. They are thinking about releasing a new class named the Runaway. The knight is a tankish melee class, the archer is a strategic range class, and the mage kind of depends how you play it, but if you play him like I do, you charge into the monsters and use fireball. That's how I do it. And it doesn't work. But hey. Each to, him, each to its own, right? So this game has four types of resources. It has life force, it has gold, it has bling, and it has crowns. The crowns has no value besides putting you up on a rating list. The blings are purchased currency. You buy with re real life money and you can spend it on finishing stuff faster in your keep. Life and gold are used to Defensive purposes and offensive purposes, generally speaking. You also have access to your structures. <coughs> and there's an attack phase and a defensive phase. The red bot down here is your health, and the blue one is your mana. Quite familiar from Diablo. You have three abilities on your keyboard, on your quick pass, one, two, three. You have a mouse, and you have a mouse button, and you point to click and move, and then there's the healing potions. This is your experience bar, this is the level of the class, also you can see the level of the class up here. Going through the inventory, you can have different sets of items, and you have your inventory, which fills up with loot as you kill stuff, basically. Then there's a page of skill sets. You have, as baseline, three types of skills depending on which class you're playing. The mage has fire, electric and unholy. The fire is typical... Uh, is your... yeah. It's, it's... single target DPS. The fireball has the highest hit, but it's quite a slow moving projectile. And then there's flame burst which has a decent damage and it's a cone area of effect. And there's configuration which is a ground targeted area of effect spell, which is for many people favored over any of the others. I prefer fireball though. And inferno which is a straight line of fire shooting out from you doing 120 damage per second and it's channeled. So you have to stand still to move that. Making it hard to kite. Then there's electric which is storm armor, chain lightning, electric charge, thunderclap and then there's Unholy, which is some sort of crowd control-ish thingy. There's Death Grip, which is a slow and heal. There's a Nightmare Cage, which is a stun, but makes it impossible to hurt the monsters for the 5 seconds. Water Rift, which pulls the monster to a center and do high damage. And Death Ball, which is a single target high DPS, which heals the user. I prefer the Charge and the Vortex combined with the Death Ball and the Fireball. This is decent AoE, it's a high single target DPS, and it has a getaway, to get away card. So, the two phases are attacking and defending. Let's check out defending first. As you visit your keep, in the other levels you have access to four rooms. 
and the point of it is to fill the rooms up with monsters and traps, making it impossible for enemy players to make it through your castle and into the castle hut to loot your chests. So, you fill up the rooms with monsters and traps. This is the basics of it. Monsters are placed in packs of 20 defensive points, and each monster are worth different uh, amounts of defensive points, like this snotter here. He's a one square unit which dies easily. He's worth one defensive point. However, this guy, the hunger bot, can pull people to him or knock them away, depending on which abilities you set. Then there's Defendertron, who defends stuff. He can either be a wall, or a bodyguard, or a AoE defender. These combined makes a nice pair. Though this is 4 defensive point, 5 defensive point, and then there's the Stampner who casts an area of silence. And then there's this bully. He knocks people around or knocks them down depending on the skill set you choose. Most abilities, most monsters have abilities you can set. But once you set them for one type of monster, it's gonna be uh, equal in all monsters set alike. So all defender trons added to your dungeon will have the same ability set. So, you can combine them over a longer area if you wish. They're linked in the white circles here. So as long as they connect, the monsters are linked. So pulling this one, attacking this guy, will pull this, 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 and this. And these are together 20 defensive points out, 20 defensive points. The good thing about spreading it out like this, makes the monster arrive at different times. So as the enemy player arrives from here, kills this guy. I'm hoping to lure him to move on because he thinks he has killed this and just moves on to the next. And that's this guy. Killing this and killing this makes all of this go at him. So he gets attacked by 40 defensive points instead of 20. And then adding in the odd traps. These are fireball traps. They're hurting a lot. So that's the basics of the of the setup. And then it's all about putting a combination of monsters you think will either slow down the enemy or kill him. Uh, different hero types requires different monsters to kill them. Like the knight, for example. You kind of need magic damage to kill him, but he's so tanky and hard to kill, so making him slow down is typical the way to deal with knights. Slow him down by putting up a com combination of monsters like this one. This one is a bodyguard who defends this one. This is a tank mob. It has tons of hit points. And then it's also defensive. Sometimes it's actually a good idea to add on the sphere of protection. You can have two monsters bodyguarding each other though, so setting it for bodyguard wouldn't work. So I'm trying to avoid the enemy players to enter my boss room. The boss room is this one. It protects your structures within the keep. It also has a much bigger uh, monster area. You can see I can have 36 points worth of monsters here. Nearly twice the normal room. Some people tend to place a monster group here and some here and then once the player moves in you're gonna aggro most of it, they hope. But as people are getting more and more experienced they are getting better at putting just one maybe two packs at a time. So getting it all linked with the boss room is quite hard. Unless you're uh, invading an enemy, it's me, because I just AOE shit. So I tend to pull a lot at the same time. So this is the structures you're defending along with the castle heart. The castle heart defines how high you can upgrade your structures. The higher castle heart, the higher structures. The structures has to be upgraded separately though. And the gold storage along with the life force storage has to accompany the rest of the structures because most of them require a lot of money. I have 200,000 gold and upgrading this castle heart is going to cost me 252,000. But if you notice, my gold reserves are full, so I have to upgrade my gold storage before I can upgrade my castle heart. These structures are under construction, that's why they have those thingies around them. This one I can't upgrade anymore because it requires me to have a castle heart rank 7. But I can't upgrade my castle heart until I have upgraded my gold storage and so on. Upgrading different structures gives you access to a higher tier of 
gear. For instance, the blacksmith. You can buy gear for your heroes here, and it's quite good gear actually. You can buy armor, weapons, jewelry, and you can sell stuff here. So, for instance, if I wanted to buy level 27 gear, I needed a tw level 27 character to equip it, but it would be able. I just need the level 27 character to actually buy it. Let's check out if I wanted to buy a lower tire. So I could buy a tire, buy a tire 20, like this stuff. This is a level 21 stuff. Or I could buy this stuff, which is at level 24. Both of them are not upgrades for me, so of course I won't buy it. This is the one I'm actually using. This is the money they cost. So I'm just gonna sell some stuff here, but I don't actually gain money from it because I'm filled to the brim with gold. Oh, that precious gold. I'm not gonna bore you with the tier of the gear right now. I'm gonna get into that later. This is my inventory. You can see the level of my mage is 25, and you can see my DPS, my health, my physical armor, my medical armor. Oh, and you can click details and you get more in-depth details about your hero, like better loot quality gain, and critical rate, and critical chance, life steal, etc. This is all defined by the gear you get. Then there's the potion brewery. You have to buy your potions, they don't actually drop. So purchasing potions aren't expensive, but if you do not win your attacks in the castles, you can burn through your gold quite fast. I'm purchasing these types of healing for my mage because they actually heal my mage up even though this is the highest one I can craft and it's technically required for my hero since it's level 25 but it overheals me. So then there's the summoning portal. This one is interesting because upgrading this gets you access to higher monsters, to better monsters. And it also gives you access to having more monsters in your castle. This one is the research lab. The research labs make you upgrade your monsters. Upgrading your monsters makes them tougher, but it also increases the level of your castle. And increasing the level of the castle is gonna lure in stronger heroes to attack. So, the worker cabin. You can have two workers at first. Workers means things to do at the same time. So you can see I'm upgrading these two. This would be the only ones I could upgrade without having purchased more workers. The workers, however, cost bling, the real life currency. You can also gain bling by completing quests, and sometimes Ubisoft runs events which gives you bling to complete. So, I have four workers working because I purchased more workers. I can advise this if you have bling. If you don't, it's okay, it just takes a while longer. The architect office gives you access to more rooms and uh, different layouts. You can't physically change the layout of your room, but you can choose what type you want. Like so. I can go here and I can go to rooms. These are the different layout of rooms I can purchase and add to my castle. I can have a maximum of 8 rooms and since I'm already at that I can't do anything until I have upgraded this once more. And I can upgrade this at the moment until I get a castle heart higher level. What you can do is you can buy a room like this and you can turn it around. You can flip and turn everything 90 degrees like so or so or so also. I can have 294 294, sorry, 295 points of monsters worth of monsters and this one was like 4, right? So this is 20 all, in get all together. And I can place a trap here. You can see I have space for a trap. So at this particular area I'd like to place a slow trap, I think. Or maybe a hamster wheel. Let's do that.
There we go. So I just placed a trap, making it harder to be here. This trap does a small damage and does a knockdown. So running through here and then attacking this guy will activate this, which this then this guy is gonna pull you in and these are gonna shoot you down. At least that's the basic idea of the of the play. Some people fall for it, others don't. So that's the defensive part of it. As you build your castle you can test it by hitting this button. Now for the fun part, attacking. A way to gain resources are by placing these mines. The mines you place as you keep levels up. The more, the higher level you keep, the more mines you can have. And you can upgrade the mines as well to produce more money. This is a steady income of cash, but it's not very high. So a good way of gaining more resources is by attacking. So I'm gonna check the region map here. I can attack until my own level which is 25. I can attack higher keeps, but it's gonna be very hard for me to, to penetrate enemy defenses. So, here I am, ready to attack. 